Welcome to Chair Shots to the Cranium. This is Stephen Goforth, and today I'm going to give you my assessment, my opinion, my thoughts, my cranium thoughts on the pay per view last night, Backlash. So, without further ado, let's get going. Kickoff match between Ruby Riot and Bailey. Uh, anytime Bailey's losing, I'm disappointed. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not sure what the WWE is doing with Bailey and what their plans for her character are are going to be, but ever since she left NXT, it seems like she has uh, not had a whole lot of accomplishment other than that one run as the WWE Women's Champion, and yes, she did have the victory at WrestleMania with elbow drop off the top rope, very happy to see that, but since then, what has happened with her, I have no idea, uh, clearly she has a fan base, clearly she could probably sell a ton of merchandise and probably is. So I, I don't know what's going on there, uh, unless it's just a push for Ruby. Again, nothing personal to Ruby. I think she's also a fantastic wrestler, has a bright future ahead of her. Uh, I thought they had a quality match, uh, a few uh, areas in the match that were a little botched. But other than that, I thought it was really good. Both wrestlers coming out injury-free, which is always a blessing. So, of course, Ruby Riot with the victory, not a happy camper on that one. Let's go and talk about the Intercontinental Championship match between Seth Rollins and The Miz. I'm going to be straight up honest with you. I like The Miz. I have no issues with The Miz. Some people cannot stand The Miz. They think that he's a waste of time, a waste of space, whatever you want to call it. I've heard them all. I like him. He makes me want to watch. He makes me want to listen. And, of course, when his hand goes up, your mouth goes shut. I always love that part. So, you know, I, I don't know what everybody's issue is with him is. I think that he is very entertaining. I think he's a quality wrestler. And quite honestly, I think he deserves another WWE title run. And I'm hoping that he will get one in a, in a possible feud with AJ Styles in the future. Who knows? Or whoever the champion's going to be. Um, but I do like the Miz. I thought the match was fantastic. I love Seth Rollins as well. I personally think Seth Rollins is better is better as a heel. Uh he just he lo he can draw heat and he can work the mic and he can work the ring. Both of these guys can work the mic. Both of these guys can perform a quality wrestling match. I thought it was outstanding. So for all you Miz haters out there, you're not gonna like what I just said, and that's fine. You're entitled to your opinion, as well as I am. But I liked it. I thought it was a quality match, and I hope to see another one like that between those two guys. Uh, the Raw Women's Championship match between Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss. Very happy about the turnout. I thought Nia Jax deserved a win. I think she deserves a long title run. And let's just, let's just be quite honest with one another here. Can Alexa Bliss truly beat Nia Jax? And if it was a one-on-one uh, -on -one match in the back alley, no, that's not happening. Uh, but, and, and again, the only way Alexa Bliss, I think, is ever going to get over on Nia Jax and win that match is if it's a two-on-one -on -one type interference uh, from somebody. Uh, or she just uh, is a cheap shot. She cheats in some way, shape, or form. Let's put it that way. So glad to see Nia Jax like the speech after the match. I thought she did a good job of that and, and playing into that um, gimmick, that role, that storyline, I guess you could say, of the anti-bullying. I thought she did a great job. And it is a, it's a fantastic message to anybody who has ever been bullied in their life. Uh like she said, the bully gets their ass kicked. So I like that part. United States Heavyweight Championship match, Jeff Hardy against Randy Orton. Uh, you know, I, I'm not, I've am not, i never been a big Randy Orton fan. Uh, I can't explain that, to be quiet. So don't ask me, why don't you like Randy Orton? What, what's your issue with Randy Orton? I can't tell you. I, I don't know. I just don't like Randy Orton's matches. Um, the man's a legend. Uh, and he's obviously had a tremendous amount of accomplishments in the wrestling industry. Nothing personal to Randy Orton. It's just not, not, not my cup of tea. Uh, Jeff Hardy, I, th I thought, uh, did a great job as well. Uh, and for him to come out on top, I think, was fitting. I think he deserves a little bit longer title reign. And uh, so, again, I was pleased with that match as well. Always amazed at how Jeff Hardy can still keep going after all that man has done in the ring. Everything he has done with jumping off of ladders, and everything else, and he is still able to walk is amazing to me. Uh, if you'd asked me 
10 years ago, would Jeff Hardy still be wrestling? I'd say absolutely not, but he is. So a true testament to that man. Elias. The Elias segment of the show was hilarious to me. I like Elias. I think that man is incredibly entertaining on the mic. I think he has a tremendous future ahead of him. Um, as far as the other stuff that got worked in there, I think that was just uh, in terms of Bobby Roode and No Way Jose and, and the other people that were involved in that, I think was purely a way to get talent on a TV screen, uh, being what we are doing the dual-branded pay-per-view. Uh, I thought that was a little unnecessary, but again, if that's the only way you're going to be get these guys in to the show, that's what you got to do. That's the one thing I don't like about this this dual show. I, I love the fact that SmackDown had their own pay-per-view, and I love the fact that Raw had their own pay-per-view because it allowed all that talent on both shows to be able to come in and wrestle and be on the show in a quality fashion. And I think that's what you need with the abundance amount of talent or the abundance of talent that both shows have. And going back to a dual branded show, I don't think there's going to be enough time in the show for everybody. So again, love the Elias segment of the pay-per-view and ready to see that man get a, t a championship title around his waist. Daniel Bryan and Big Cast. I was not a fan of this match. I love Daniel Bryan. I think he's phenomenal. Um, the two of these guys in the ring together, I just wasn't a fan of it. Nothing personal, guys. Uh, Big Cass, he still, uh, still has some uh, winning over to do with me. I think that uh, I'm not sure how I like him as a heel yet. Uh, I liked him better as a face. Uh, again, I, I, I'm not one that's going to bash wrestlers here on the show. Never will. I try to be objective and honest, uh, and some things I say may not, uh, people may not like it, but you know, again, I'm just telling you how I feel. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the big cast character right now, uh, but again, it could grow on me. Uh, Carmella, Carmella, I'm sorry, Carmella and Charlotte Flair, uh, not a fan of this one. Uh, Carmella's voice absolutely gets on my nerves, um, and I think, I think part of that is great. I think it draws attention to her. But after so much of it, it's like, okay, please stop already. I, I don't want to hear this anymore. It's starting to get on my nerves. So I think maybe scaling that back a little bit of, of the screeching and the screaming and all that stuff that she's doing, scale that back a little bit, and I think we got a, a, a fantastic, entertaining match. Uh, Charlotte Flair, as always, is fantastic in the ring. And I think Carmella, I'll be honest with you, her in-ring skills are really coming along. And um, I thought they had a, a quality match other than all the, the screaming and hollering. Uh, going on by Carmella, was pleased and a little surprised to see that Carmella retained the championship. I think that it was the right move. I think that she should have kept that belt, uh, especially after so long of having the money in the bank and then cashing it in. I just don't want to see her drop that title so soon. So definitely approve of that one. All right, AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, again, anytime AJ Styles is in a wrestling match, it's going to be a good one. Let's just be honest with one another right now. AJ Styles is, just like his, his gimmick says, his character is phenomenal. He really is. And anytime that man's having a match, I don't care who's he, who he's in the ring with, it's going to be a good one. Much less Shinsuke Nakamura. Those two guys put on a tremendous match with one another. Uh, was a little surprised. I thought that this was going to be Shinsuke's time to get the title. He did not, of course. That one surprised me. Uh, so kudos to those two men for putting on a, a fantastic show. And I'm liking the Shinsuke heel turn. I'm liking that that character that he's into right now. He's playing a fantastic heel. Keep it up. I'm very much entertained by it. Love the new theme music too. Love that. Uh, Braun Strowman, Bobby Lashley against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Uh, again, I know I sound like a broken record right now. Tremendous match, in my opinion. Um, Kevin Owens, love that character. Love what he does in the ring. Sami Zayn as well. Like the two of those two guys together. Uh, of course, do they have a snowball's chance of beating Str uh, Strowman and Lashley? No, they do not. Uh, so, obviously, Strowman and Lashley coming out on top of that one was the most realistic thing to happen. Those two guys together make a phenomenal team. 
cannot wait to see Bobby Lashley in the ring sometime soon, I hope, with Brock Lesnar. I want that man to be the one to take the title off of Brock Lesnar. I think that would be a fantastic match. Finally, Roman Reigns versus Samoa Joe. Uh, again, a lot of Roman Reigns haters out there. I get it, people. Uh, you feel like the WWE is trying to push him down your throat. I get it. Uh, but the fact remains, he is a quality entertainer. He is a good wrestler. And he deserves the push that he's getting. No matter, and it's been said many, many times, no matter if you love the man or you hate the man, when he walks out, you're on your feet. And you're making some kind of a noise for him. So that says a lot. Uh, Samoa Joe, uh, I don't know if you've read some of my tweets lately. Uh, again, if you don't follow me on Twitter, follow me at cheer 2 cranium uh, But I did put out a few tweets recently about Samoa Joe and his mic skills. Uh, it was the segment he had on Raw, and then the very next night he had it on SmackDown. I thought he did an outstanding job. That guy gets on the mic, and I'm 100% tuned in to what he's saying and 100% entertained by it. So, again, you get him in the ring, and it's just as good, if not better, than what he's doing on the microphone. So, you know, I was a little bit surprised to see Roman beat him. I would have loved to have seen Samoa come out on top. Uh, didn't happen, of course. But I understand that, hey, Roman is getting a push right now. And I'll be honest with you, I was hoping that he would get the Universal title off of Brock Lesnar. Uh, I like Brock Lesnar, people. I really do. I like, I'm extremely entertained when, when Paul Heyman comes out there and spews his words out about uh, the reigning, defending, undisputed Universal Heavyweight Champion Brock Lesnar. But it's not that title is not on Raw every week, and I think it should be. I think it's losing some of its, um, what do you want to call it, luster, its uh, uh, power, its entertainment value, whatever you want to call it. I think the belt needs to be on Raw more, every, actually every week. And if, if Lesnar's not going to be on Raw every week, then we need to put the title on somebody that is going to be on Raw. Obviously, that person is Roman Reigns. Uh, that person could be Samoa Joe. That person could be Bobby Lashley, like I said earlier. That person could be Kevin Owens, who's already had a title reign, and it was extremely, an extremely good one, in my opinion. So, again, uh, Roman Reigns defeating Samoa Joe. A little bit surprised by it. I, I say a little bit, a tiny bit. I thought uh, Joe would come out on top, but did not. Overall, ladies and gentlemen, I thought the show was good. Uh, uh, was it its best pay-per-view, WWE's best pay-per-view? No, it was not. Uh, but I thought it was very entertaining and uh, was pleased by it overall. Cannot wait to the next one, see what happens there. Uh, and then, of course, see how this uh, universal title picture is going to play out. Who is going to be challenging Brock again? Will it be Roman Reigns? Uh, will Shinsuke finally get that title off AJ Styles? Is that the last we're going to see of those guys? Uh, if, if it is, who is going to be challenging AJ from this point forward? Again, my vote is The Miz. Hope to see that happen. Uh, where is Big Kaz's character going to go from here? We don't know. Uh, hopefully, uh, it will continue to get better. I think it will. I think the guy's got a lot of talent. I truly mean that. So let's see what happens there. How long will Nia Jax keep that belt around her waist? I hope a very long time. Uh, again, time will or it remains to be seen how much or how that will happen. Um, and then what's going to happen with Bailey? Will Bailey finally stop jobbing to everybody she gets in the ring with? Is she finally going to get the push I think she deserves, um, as well as with Sasha Banks? So, again, thank you guys, as always, for listening to me babble and rant and give my opinion or my cheer shot to the cranium, I like to say, because, of course, I like all my topics, my interviews, everything I talk about or do. I like it to, like it to rattle the cranium like a cheer shot would. So until next time, thank you so much for being here. Be on the lookout for more exciting interviews coming from me, and we will see you soon. Thanks, guys. Welcome to Chair Shots to the Cranium. This is Stephen Gofor. 